Hey everybody, it's Chili here. Welcome back to 3D Fundamentals Tutorial 10. Today our topic is going to be perspective correction. Now I know that we're on the shader train now and you guys want to make a bunch of cool ass shader effects and that's good, but we got to address a problem that I've sort of been studiously avoiding up until this point. Like uh, on the train, you got some dude sitting close by you, mumbling to himself loudly, and you just you just try to avoid eye contact. Hope he doesn't notice you. You don't want you don't want to get involved. But today we are going to confront the crazy self mumbler. We might get ourselves stabbed in the spleen, but a man's got to do what a man's got to do. Now you might be asking, what is this problem Chili is talking about? What have we been avoiding up until this point? Well, take a look at our textured cube here. Um, when I start to rotate this motherfucker, do you notice anything weird? Do you notice anything wonky? Look at the texture along here. It's, it's wiggling its ass at us is what it's doing. It's taunting us. It's saying, nya 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 nya, you can't fix this. Look at this jank. This jank is all for you. And we gotta stop it from wiggling its ass at us. If we just let this insult slide, like, I mean, that's how you become someone's bitch in prison, right? You can't let it slide, you gotta confront it. So, how are, well, first of all, what is this ass wiggling bullshit? And, um, how are we gonna fix it? If you think back to any PS1 game, you'll notice that shit right away. Let's look at some of these textures here, let me just freeze the frame. Well, look at look at this. This should be a straight line here. This is the bricks. Look at how this shit is weaving up and down, weaving and bobbing. What the hell? So you saw that kind of texture distortion on the PlayStation 1 all the goddamn time. So what exactly is this phenomenon and why are we being afflicted with it? Well, let's take a look back at how we do our texturing. So we've got some texture here, it's basically just a raster image, and we've got some geometry and we map um, pixel coordinates on our texture to vertices in our geometry. Now when we transform the geometry and then we do the perspective transformation on it, it's going to look like some something like this in screen space. And the way we map pixels from the screen onto the texture is we, we map them linearly. So if a, if a pixel is halfway between say these two vertices here, if this pixel here is going to map to here. And that makes sense, right? This pixel here is going to map to here. And this pixel here that is halfway in between these two on this line here is going to map to here. And this is where things start to break down. Let's take a look at this 3D model here. It's just, uh, it's got four little sections here, uh, broken up into four equal sections with different colors. Now let me uh, look at it in perspective here. We'll get some perspective going. So now we can see something here. Uh, if we look here, these are all equal sections. So this is the halfway point of the model. Now what can we say about this? Is this half, is this halfway point here, halfway between this vertex and this vertex in the screen? Is this distance the same as this distance? No, it is not. So this here shows us the problem that we are having because when we do our texturing, uh, the halfway point, so basically this line here, would appear halfway between here and here. So it would actually appear maybe around here in our texturing system. Uh, but in reality, it should be down here. You get the four, they call it four shortening, but I think that's a dumb name. It should really be like far shortening because the far things are getting squished, compressed, and the close things are getting expanded. So it's not a linear representation here. It's a non-linear system. And this actually makes a lot of sense mathematically because when you think about it, when we are doing our perspective transformation, we are multiplying by one over Z, we're dividing by Z. Uh, but the function one over Z isn't a linear function. Graph that shit and you will see that it is decidedly not linear. There's no line about this, it's very curvy. And therein lies the problem. It's the one over Z divide that create, introduces this non-linearity. And that non-linearity means that we can't linearly interpolate across our texture. 
So the question now stands, how do we solve this? Well, I'm not going to do a rigorous mathematical derivation or a proof here. Uh, I'm simply going to appeal to reason and try to show you something that should make sense and jive in your mind. At the end of this video, I'll talk a little bit more about the proof, the mathematical proof and derivation aspect. So the XY screen space where we do all of our rasterizing in, this is a space in which the object coordinates uh, have been divided by Z. So you've got some object here, in object space you divide the X and Y coordinates of the vertices by Z and you're going to get this perspective projection here. Uh, and these guys map to the vertices in object space, fine, but they don't map to this. Now what happens if we bring these texture coordinates into the same 1 over Z space as we've done for the projected um, object vertices? Uh, so what we would do is for every one of these guys, we would find its uh, Z coordinate on the object and then we would do texture coordinate divided by Z. Now, because these guys are in the same space as these guys, uh, if we interpolate between them in screen space, we will actually get a linear interpolation. So we interpolate between the Z divided texture coordinates and then we get those Z divided uh, interpolated results for every pixel on the screen. Then when we want to find the color of that pixel, all we got to do is recover the original texture coordinate by multiplying by the Z at this position. So we multiply this interpolated one by Z, get the original texture coordinate, do the lookup into the texture, which might be, I don't know, somewhere like here, and then use that to color this pixel. Now, in order to do this, we need to know the Z coordinate, the exact Z coordinate at every pixel point on the screen here. We can't just interpolate you know, this Z here, Z1, this Z here, Z2, we can't interpolate between them to get the Z because it's the same problem we had with the texture coordinates that's uh, linear interpolating in a non-linear space. But intuitively, we can interpolate 1 over Z1 and 1 over Z2 in this space. And that will be a linear interpolation. Then we, when we want to get the Z here, all we got to do is do, you know, 1 over the one over Z, Z interpolated. So we find the inverse of Z here, we find the inverse of Z here. We interpolate that linearly in screen space, and then for every pixel, we find the, we do the inverse to recover the original Z. We use that Z to recover the original texture coordinate. So basically, what we're doing is, first, we bring Z into the perspective space. And then we use that, we multiply that uh, 1 over Z to bring the texture coordinate into the perspective space. We interpolate these Z divided um, attributes across the, uh, the perspective space, the screen space. And then for every pixel in here, we recover the original Z by reciprocating. We use that to recover the original texture coordinate. We use that to look up and then to draw the color. It seems very complicated when I lay it out like that, but actually, as usual in code, it, it turns out to be very simple. So here's the commit where I have implemented the uh, perspective correction, and it just changes to two files. Pube screen transformer is the main one, because this is where the perspective is being calculated, right? So I added a shit ton of comments in here just to uh, help you to review it yourself. But let me go over it. First thing we do is we we calculate the Z inverse. Well, now, before, Cube Screen Transformer was only taking in a VEC3 for the position. But now it's going to take in the entire vertex. It needs all that data because it also needs to bring the texture coordinates in to the uh, perspective space. So we take the entire vertex and what we do is first we find the Z inverse which is just 1 divided by the, the position dot Z. Uh, then we multiply the entire vertex by Z inverse. So this is basically dividing the all of the components of the vertex 
by Z. So we divide X, Y, and Z by Z. We divide texture X and texture Y by Z. Uh, basically anything in there that can be interpolated will be divided by Z now. After the Z divide, we do the standard adjustment from uh, normalized space, you know, generally going from negative one to one into screen space coordinates like this. And then we store the inverse of Z into uh, the Z coordinate of position. Because remember, we divided the entire vertex by Z. So Z divided by Z is always going to be 1. There's no use in just storing 1. Um, so we'll store the inverse of Z where Z used to be stored. And we'll interpolate that along with X and Y. Z divided X and Y. And then later on, we'll use this Z to recover the uh, the original Z. So from this point on, Z actually stores one over Z. It's, it's a little bit of a shitty naming, uh, a little bit confusing, but it's fine. And it reuses this that was, wasn't gonna be used for anything useful anyways. Now in the pipeline, when we process uh, triangle vertices, instead of passing them just the position, we're gonna pass it the entire vertex to work on. And down here is where the other important part happens. So uh, before we were just passing the uh, interpolated vertex data directly to the pixel shader. But now what we're going to do is we're going to do some perspective correction. So first thing we do is we recover the original Z, which is we take the, the Z that's in the vertex, which is actually one over Z, and we reciprocate that to recover actual Z. Then we multiply the entire vertex by the actual Z and that is going to bring all the texture coordinates back into object space. It's going to recover them and then we pass those um, those attributes again to the pixel shader and it does its magic and we put that we put the result of that onto the screen with put pixel. And now if we run our texturing, you can see here right away, no more fucking butt wiggling, no more disrespecting of the programmer by the textures. This shit is solid as fuck. These are properly perspective corrected textures and uh, it shows. Now back in the day, this operation of uh, finding the reciprocal of Z for every single pixel that you draw, this was very expensive. In the days of early 3D games like Quake 1 and Descent, uh, the FPU still kind of sucked and math was often done in fixed point with integers because it was a lot faster, but the reciprocal, this one had to be done with the floating point unit. And it was slow as balls. There was a lot of tricks that were done, like in Doom, you had where you never had any slanted surfaces. Everything was either like a vertical wall or a horizontal floor. There was never anything in between, and that made the Z calculation much simpler. Quake did proper perspective correction, and that gave it a lot more flexibility than Doom, but it only did it every, I think, like 8 pixel or so. So it wouldn't have perspective correction across the in for every pixel, but it would be pretty good. And this actually allowed a really neat trick. It would give the, the floating point unit of the Pentium, it would give it uh, a 1 over Z to reciprocate. And while it was reciprocating that, it could do, you know, it could draw 8 pixels and do the interpolation for 8 pixels using fixed point math. And then when the result came from the reciprocation, then it could do 8 more pixels. This was actually a kind of rudimentary multiprocessing before multi-core CPUs were a thing. On the other hand, like I said before, the PlayStation would just say fuck it and draw shitty looking textures and say deal with it. Now even though you, you might not notice it, this actually affects uh, other things like this color blending in the same way. It's just uh, you probably never noticed, it, it, it's not as obvious, but if you compare this to the non-perspective corrected version, you'll see that the results are actually different. Let's talk about differences from the hardware pipeline. There's really only one I want to talk about, and that is uh, in the actual hardware pipeline for you know a GPU, you can control how each vertex attribute is uh, interpolated independently. So you can set some attributes to be interpolated linearly, some to be interpolated uh, with perspective correction, some to not be interpolated at all. Here we are basically just multiplying all the entire vertex, all the attributes by 1 over Z. So we do perspective correct for everything and that's it, you got to deal with it. 
Now, the last thing I'm going to talk about is the actual mathematical derivation. What I've shown you is I've basically kind of given you, uh, hopefully, a convincing argument as to why one over interpolating one over z in screen space and then recovering will give us the correct result. But I haven't actually proved anything. I just sort of said, yeah, this this makes sense, doesn't it? Let's do this. Um, but if you really want the mathematical gory details, I'll put a couple of links on the wiki page. Uh, there are some there are some good resources on the internet. You got to search for it but there's some good stuff so on this scratch a pixel page here if you go down to finding z by interpolation uh, you'll find some good mathematical uh, discussion of how you interpolate z in screen space and you, as you can see here the math is, is very fun um, very fun to crunch these numbers and there's also a research paper here that uh, has a good good talk about this stuff interpolating z values uh, and interpolating attribute values for perspective correct interpolation so i'm not going to go over the gory details here because it's probably of limited interest to most of you but for those of you who are interested i will give you some resources and you can look into that yourself you weird weird masochists but I think that's going to do it for today. Now we have much nicer textures, and that's great. But as a side effect for calculating these nice textures, we also have the correct Z value for every pixel. And this is going to be huge in allowing us to fix another problem that has plagued us since almost the beginning of this series. I'm not going to tell you what that problem is here. I'm going to leave that as a little cliffhanger for the next one. Stay tuned. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please click the like button. Your support means a lot for this project. And I will see you soon with some more 3D fundamentals.